Hey y'all, welcome back. Glad to have you here. A couple weeks back, we picked up a couple of projects, a YZ125, and in the beginning of that video, I broke down a 2014 KX250F project that we picked up and didn't know if it was going to build it or part it out. I left it up to you guys and overwhelmingly you said build it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this engine today, see if this is something we can repair, replace, fix, trash, whatever. And then we're going to go ahead and get it back in the bike and see if we can get this thing to fire up. And I hope you decide to stick around for that because I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of work. Let's get started. All right, let's start ripping into this block and see what's good and what's not good. Now you got to watch these Kawasaki's and some Suzuki's. This uh, bolt that holds the crankshaft on is actually a reverse thread. So you want to tighten it to loosen it. Counter shaft spacer missing. Now, normally I would put a protector cap to protect the threads on the end of this crankshaft, but there's no saving this crankshaft. She's done. should just pop right off. Let's get our case bolts out. Go around and double check, make sure you get all of them out before you start pulling these cases apart. Again, there's not much we're going to damage here because it's already also busted up, but good practice, you know. Again, I would protect this. As we tighten this, as we tighten this, you'll see our cases start to open up. You may have to tap on the counterbalance shaft a little bit. Now keep in mind, there is an O-ring inside of here. Um, and of course, the counterbalance um, sleeve, which is missing. If those were still on there, sometimes they're hard to get off. You just tap this as you go. off and we'll get a closer look so the inside of these cases obviously they're done they're good for scrap we want to save our pins and we're gonna save our screens here to clean them up there's an o-ring that's down inside of there we need to take off now 
here's our cases connecting rod and crankshaft a little bit of a polish we should be able to get this thing back up and running yeah she's really chewed this one really even wouldn't be worth rebuilding out together she's binding just a little bit you get some rust on the back side drum out transmission looks like it's in good shape no damage some other pieces in here I'm not sure if the other cases have those so we'll wait and take a look at that I don't throw anything away yet bolts internal in the engine blue Loctite now the reason that they had a hole in the back of here for whatever reason they drove this pin out that's probably why they did it so I drilled into that one knocked this pin out pressed it into here and we just sealed that hole up with a little JB weld now obviously they had taken this off so we're gonna go ahead and switch this over and then also we have a pin right here for the shift shaft. I have to knock this out and get that over there as well. Now for whatever reason, they even took this stud out of this case yeah, I don't know what they were doing selling all these parts separately this could probably fetch a half a cent but to get this out you know obviously you don't want to grab it with a pair of pliers what we'll do is double nut it and then we can back it out so our left side case is going to go ahead and replace the counter shaft bearing this one spins free this one's kind of locked up all the other bearings are in pretty good shape obviously the supports have been taken out also this little vent cap or one-way valve is also needs to be swapped over all right so I think as far as this case is concerned we're good to go we'll get all this stuff cleaned up real well and then we can start trying to put this bottom end back together all right, so now they got the cases cleaned up pretty decently. There's a couple more things I want to look at real quick before I start putting this back together. And that's going to be my drain plug threads to make sure that they're not stripped out. If I have to do any repairs, now's the time to do it. And secondly, on there, on these, there's an oil injector that sprays the wrist pin and the cylinder with oil. And there is a jet that's supposed to be in there. Of course, since they removed everything from this part, uh, they removed that as well. So... I want to make sure we get this one out of here, make sure it's clean and free, and get it back in there. All 
you know, the hole in this thing is tiny. If you forget to put this in, you may have oil pressure issues. She blows through fine. And of course, if this is blocked up, you're potentially gonna have a damage to your top end. It's a little bit of a snug fit coming out. I'm not gonna use any Loctite on this. I don't wanna risk blocking that hole in any way, shape or form. Now, once we get that snugged, I'm gonna blow through this port right here and make sure that that is coming out. Perfect. All right, let's start getting this transmission back together. All right, got all new seals in the case. Time to seal these puppies up. Ultra black, RTV, or you can use ultra gray, blends better. Hard rubber roller. Get these things on the jungle website. And what we wanna do is just put a nice even coat this does a good job of not letting you put too much on.
Now we'll go ahead and use our crankshaft puller tool. This part bolts to the crank. This part here pushes against your case. And in this particular case, it's raised here, not raised on the other side. We're going to have to balance it out. Usually do that with a socket. As we tighten this nut, it'll pull these cases together without doing any damage to the crankshaft or the cases. Now as you're going, you may need to tap right around here. Uh, that counter shaft coming through is a little tight sometimes in that bearing. Once you get that pulled down tight, go ahead and get all your case bolts in and we'll get them torqued up. Now, best thing for these is just go ahead and uh, throw your impact gun on there and just hold the trigger down until either they snap or the gun stops vibrating. No, don't do that. We're just going to tighten these down very, very lightly with the gun just to save some time and then we'll go ahead and torque them. Now, of course, we want to make sure that everything spins nice and free. Nothing's dragging. And we're in good shape. Let's continue putting this thing together. Good thing to keep in mind.
put this on before you put your crankshaft gear on. think that kicker might be stripped out I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit more now, if you remember we did not have a clutch for this so I ordered one let's get it unboxed Well, I did not get the bearing. I do not have the bearing. So, I have to order that. Alright, so I got my piston rings installed in the correct orientation on the piston. Now what we need to do is get this, what I like to do is actually get this installed in the cylinder before I connect it to the engine. I just find it a lot easier to not have to wrestle with piston rings while it's connected to the connecting rod and fighting with the cylinder and all that stuff. So best thing to do for me is just to do it this way. So our orientation is going to be correct where this is the left side of the engine where the timing chain goes. The piston has a mark on it which faces the exhaust side in this particular case. We want to maintain this orientation, so what we'll do is just flip this over, and we will flip this over, and we're going to drop the piston in just like that. And it's just wide enough here where I can push my pin through. I'm just going to put a rag and get my other clip in so I don't drop that down in the crankcase. Once you verify that that clip is in the groove properly, we can go ahead and drop our cylinder on. Go ahead and rotate the engine to make sure it's not binding in any way. All the valves move freely. It says super, super clean. So somebody's been in here and done some work to it. I'm going to assume that they put valve seals in here. Might be stupid of me, but it looks like it's got new guides. New valves. Everything is super clean. So 
Excellent. Put a couple drops of oil on the threads and on the washers. Again, I'm going to use my impact gun just to run these down before we torque them. And the torque spec on this is 44 foot pounds. We're going to do this in a sequence of number one, two, three, four. And I'm going to do it in a couple of different steps. I'm going to go to 20 first, then we'll go up to like 35, and then we'll do 44. All right, head torque down. Now what we're gonna do is throw our cams in and check our valve clearances. All right, first thing we wanna do is get some red Loctite in these journals. No, we're gonna use some ultra slick engine assembly lube. Make sure everything spins nice and free here. Well, we've got some camshafts, but they are not correct. This is what you run into sometimes. Should have checked it more thoroughly. Obviously, our bearing here is way small for this opening. So, not correct. And this one does not look right either. I actually set, have a set of cams, 2006 to 2016, KX250F. I don't remember what kind of condition these things are in, but they definitely got a little bit of material on here. We'll have to clean this up and get a measurement on that. And of course, but they are both exhaust cams which might be okay. Well, the exhaust cam would work. Obviously, we're going to clean that up and measure it. The intake, I don't have an intake cam for the KX for whatever reason. So I'm going to see if I can get a secondhand used set of camshafts or at a minimum, at least get an intake cam. Back to the research. All right, so I ended up getting a used set of 2014 KX250F camshafts, and they're in pretty good shape. So we're going to put this together and check our shimming. Now the trick when you're doing any kind of shimming is you want to set your camshafts up where the timing marks are in the right place so these lobes are sitting where they need to be. On this Kawasaki that's going to be with this mark on the intake camshaft lined up with the cylinder head and then you'll have another mark pointing straight up and the same thing on the camshaft. Now when these marks are lined up when you spin this around both of your camshafts should be even and looking like flat on the top. If for some reason you got the timing marks lined up and one of your lobes is like that, then you know you probably got a spun gear on the end of your crankshaft. And don't say it doesn't happen because I've seen it many, many times. Now this is absolutely critical that these caps 
no matter what bike you've got kawasaki yamaha suzuki honda well honda's a little bit different but regardless this is a critical spot for torquing these caps have a tendency of twisting or warping when you over tighten them and they're very difficult to recover now, kawasaki does a great job of numbering their cam caps so that you can see how they want you or the tightening sequence that they want you to use Once you have your cam caps torqued down, your camshaft should rotate freely. If they're binding at all and they don't want to turn, a couple of different things we want to check for. First of all, you may not have any clearance between your lifter and your camshaft, which is going to make it drag. And a lot of times what you get here is if these are, cam caps have been over tightened, they'll tweak. And what happens is the clearance will be incorrect for the camshaft and it takes a little bit of work to open that back up again but it's very critical that we torque these down ours are spinning nice and free so we're going to go ahead and get a measurement on all of our clearances so we got a point uh one zero millimeter one tenth of a millimeter and that's falling right through on the intake And on the exhaust, so we're going to jump up. I'm going to go up to maximum on the intake is 0.15. And that's falling right through too. So we're definitely going to need to do some shimming. Now it's just a matter of finding exactly what our clearance is. So now we've got our measurements here. Uh, 0 0.5 millimeter, 0 0.5 millimeter, 0 0.3 millimeter, 0 0.35 millimeter. Next thing we're going to do is pull these cams back out and we're going to measure our shims that we've got in there. Nice thick shims. So 3.05 millimeter, 3.1, 2.7, Now to figure out what shims we need to replace these with, we're going to use this formula right here. And that's A equals B minus C. Obviously you do the B minus C in parentheses before you do the plus D. And B is uh, A is going to be uh, what we want with the, sh the replacement shim thickness that we're looking for. B is going to be the measured valve clearance. So if we go on to this first one, it's going to be 0 0.5 minus the specified valve clearance for the intake. It's going to be 0.15 or 0.10 to 0.15. I like to go more on the higher side so that as they wear... Um, they tighten up and we don't have any clearance issues. So we're going to go 0 0.15 and then plus our present th uh, shim thickness. So 2.65. So if we do this equation, uh, our A is going to equal 0 0.5 minus 0 0.15. And that's going to be 0 0.35 plus 2.65. And we're going to be looking for A is a 3.0 shim for this particular one. Now, this is not going to be 100% exact because I could not get a proper measurement. Once we start getting up higher in these numbers, um, the feeler gauges are spread out a little bit more so I'm going to try and get them all closer remeasure them and then we'll do this again all right I had to, the exhaust I nailed first time intake I had to go ahead and take another measurement and do a recalculation and now I've got it I got 0.15 millimeter on both of the intakes and 0 0.20 millimeter on the exhaust which are well within the specs now we're going to go ahead and throw our timing chain back up and get this thing timed up
All right, first things first, let's get this engine up on top dead center. I'm going to drop a long screwdriver down inside the cylinder. You can use a straw, whatever you got. And we're going to turn this until that screwdriver is at its topmost travel. In other words, it's not going down, not coming up. You see, I go this way, it starts going down. I turn back, it starts going down. We want to find right in the middle of those two. And generally what you'll find is your keyway will point straight up the engine on these. That'll tell you you're at top dead center. Top dead center just means that the piston's at its highest most travel before it starts going back down again. We're going to start with fitting our exhaust cam the correct way. And again, like we talked about, all those timing marks. Now for setting this up, you want the front side of the timing chain to be taut while you're doing this. So if it's loose and you set it up, once you tighten it up, it will not line up. So this one here is tight all the way up and our timing mark is lined up and our crankshaft has not moved, which is going to be very important. And now we will fit our intake cam. This can be a little bit tricky, a little bit of trial and error to get it in there and get those timing marks lined up as well. So you can see we need to rotate this cam a little bit more. So we'll go ahead and double check. Top dead center. Front of the chain is taut. Timing mark lines up on the exhaust cam. Timing mark lines up on the intake cam. Our timing is good. Now keep in mind that we're going to need an O-ring here and another O-ring on top of this that Kawasaki uses. If you do not put these in, what you're going to find is oil will be getting into your spark plug hole and then you will see oil coming out of your weep hole here or your drain hole. If you're wondering where the longer silver bolt goes in, always goes in number five. I have no idea why. Again, just double check to make sure your camshafts are moving freely without any drag. Now that all the timing components are together, I like to go ahead and rotate this engine over a couple of times, make sure nothing's binding. Double check my timing marks. They're right on the button. Very, very good.
so this engine was missing the oil return screen kind of critical Get a little bit of dielectric tune-up grease and just put little dabs of it in the corners doesn't matter if it seeps in a little bit it's not going to hurt anything unlike rtv it's just a silicone thick grease So before I go any further, I'm going to get some oil in this crankcase and prime this oil pump. It's also a good way for me to check to make sure I don't have any leaks on my case before I get this all back together. good functioning pump now when you take these apart there should be a spring in here a lot of times I take these apart and there is no spring it means they never got put back in all right so minus a couple of hiccups I'm pretty pleased with how this came out we got a good solid motor here all right we're gonna go ahead and get this thing back in the frame get everything hooked up like the cruise control and the lane departure warning and then we're going to try and get this thing to fire up. Fingers crossed like crazy because I literally don't know why they took this thing apart. I mean, obviously the bottom end came apart, but there were so many issues and pieces missing. And why they took everything apart makes no sense to me, but it often never does.
So we got this intake boot, and I know we're going to struggle getting it on because it's hard as a rock. It doesn't even want to squeeze at all. However, it's in really good condition. There's no cracks or anything like that. So easy thing to do with this is go ahead and throw it in a pot of boiling water for a few minutes, and this thing will be soft as a pillow. I don't know. It'll be soft. Got a new set of throttle cables, we'll change them out. While I'm in here, I had another throttle body from that 2011 Nightmare project. So it actually had a good uh, map sensor on there. So we ended up having no charge on that one. All right, so before we go kicking this thing until we're winded, let's make sure that we're getting spark. Yep, good strong spark. I like it. All right, let's get some fresh non-ethanol in here. E-free. I did jump this fuel pump with 12 volts and it ran. I don't know how it's going to run here with kicking it. We don't know how well our stator is for powering this up. We don't know if the pump's actually going to pump anything. We don't know if the fuel injectors are going to work. Just don't know. Almost forgot the condenser. Be kicking all day. All right, let's see how much more work I have to do. Oh, let's pull this enrichment knob. Whatever it is. Let's artificially flavor this thing with a little bit of fuel. She's running under her own power. I am missing a mid pipe for the exhaust. I did not notice that it was missing. But now that we know this is running, and that's fantastic news, I'm going to go ahead and get the radiators back on, get some coolant in this thing, and get an air filter in it, and all the other doodads and patty wax and knickknacks and all that stuff. So get the rest of the motor mounts on. Whew. Pretty happy about that. I was kind of 50-50 on this one. I'm going to go ahead and end this video here on a high note. I do have to order some more parts for it. A couple of knick-knack things. I want to probably get a whole set of plastics for it. Uh, since it's a nice bike, we're going to go ahead and replace the rear tire. I got a new chain, new sprockets, um, levers, grips, a bunch of other stuff that I want to do to this bike. I want to get something out for you this week. So... We'll end it here. Uh, as always, I thank you guys very much for all your likes, comments, subscribes, shares. Uh, it, I really appreciate it. It means more than you know. Don't forget to comment on your thoughts on this bike or any thoughts in general. That's going to do it for me for today. I'm going to keep working on it, but that'll be in the next video. So again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. Hoo-wee!